This is Captain's Log with your host, Captain Mark Gray. Welcome aboard. Sea tales are true stories that could save your boat, your property, your life perhaps, and perhaps the life of a loved one. And we're going to have sea tales up for you next. My Sea Tales guest is Mr. Jerry Gaylord. Welcome aboard, sir. Or rather, you should be welcoming me aboard. This is your yacht, your boat. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about your boating history? Well, uh, I started boating in 1964 when we purchased our first boat. Uh, it was a sailboat. I've gradually gone up to power, but we had that almost 10 years to the day. Sold it. Purchased our first power boat, which was a 31-foot uh, sport fisher. Had that approximately four years, at which time we sold it and purchased this boat right here. And this was the first new boat I've had. And it'll be, it was just nine years old uh, last 4th of July. So overall, I've been boating for about 24 years. And what type of boat is this? This uh, is a trawler. It's an American built boat made down in Costa Mesa, 38 foot, uh, powered by twin diesel engines. Uh, very comfortable and seaworthy boat. We found it uh, very comfortable for what we do, which is primarily cruising and uh, di scuba diving, fishing, and just generally relaxing and enjoying life. Well, for nine years old, it does look in mint shape, but I do understand you have a sea tale for us, a true story with a safety message. And could you tell us about that, sir? Yes, I do. Uh, I recently, well, within the last four or five years, have been certified for scuba diving. Uh, after that, my daughter, uh, my son is, scuba, is certified, and my daughter also decided that she would like to get into scuba diving. Uh, for those of who are familiar with any diving activities, uh, there is a lot of training one goes through, uh, a lot of safety items. Uh, you spend a lot of working water dives, or they teach you buddy breathing with when you're with your buddy if they should run out of air. Also, things making free ascents from very deep water. My daughter, who for a girl is rather macho, when she started diving, she used to dive with me all the time, and she was convinced that, gee, Dad always uses air much faster than I do. So all of the training she got, she more or less uh, got a little complacent and always gauged her bottom time based on whether or not I had air without paying any attention to her own pressure regulator and also uh, how much air she had left in the tanks. Uh, during the lobster season last year, uh, I took her on her second dive uh, for lobster and we were diving in approximately 90 feet of water. And as usual, she was always using uh, dad as the gauge. Because if dad has air, I've got air, because he always runs out of air first. Well, when I start diving deep, I use a different tank, a uh, tank that is good, has a larger volume and higher pressure, which she was unaware of, so that I could get my bottom time up to stay down there for lobster. Well, we were working the bottom, and there was a very strong current running. And again, her second dive, uh, she was expending air a lot faster than she thought. I went off uh, looking in some holes and caves for lobster and turned back to check on my daughter, and she gave me the sign that she uh, it indicated she was getting low on air, when in reality, uh, she was telling me she was out of air. So, so the wrong sign came across. The wrong there. sign came across. Uh. Uh, she should have uh, never gotten as low as she did on air. But once I realized that she was in a problem, I swam back over to her and she grabbed my regulator to start breathing air. Uh, and I was able to get air to her, but in making the ascent, she did uh, become unconscious. Uh, one of the beauties of diving in this type of situation is one of the things they always tell you is never ever hold your breath. Well, with an unconscious person, automatically you start exhaling because as you ascend from deep water high pressure the air in your lungs begin to expand so you're always pushing air out of your lungs well we were able I was able to get her to the surface and revive her uh, after we got everyone on board and she got through the initial shock it became very evident to me that the courses you take and the information that is taught when you start diving, and particularly in the type of diving we do on aboard our boat, take a few people out, uh, it's easy to become complacent. It's very comfortable down there. It's interesting. You see a lot of different uh, sea, marine life, uh, some of the diving off of California here and the Channel Islands, some of the most beautiful spots in the world. 
he become very complacent, and my daughter fell into that bad habit of not checking your equipment, but it comes across to you real fast that there's going to be a time there's an emergency. And that one emergency there was very fortunate for me because immediately to fall back to buddy breathing and what you should do when there is an emergency, I, I'm really glad I had the course and was able to help her because it, uh, what we did was avoid, I think, a very serious accident. Uh, and I think one of the things that uh, at least I've got from my daughter too is when we do go diving now, just for a pleasure dive, we'll go through some of the routines for uh, making free ascents from deep water, buddy breathing, so that if this happens again with her or myself or someone else, a friend, that we won't have to stop and think what to do or how to do it, but it'll be just become automatic to you. Uh, I think uh, in diving, scuba diving on some of the commercial boats, when they take a lot of people out who don't have a boat, uh, the routines they go through, they have a dive master. People there are always uh, attuned to the emergencies that can happen. You have a lot of people, a lot of friends around, always keeping you on your toes. But in your private vessel with a few friends, it's easy to become complacent. To All of a sudden, it becomes uh, second nature to you. So you kind of grab your gear and you go diving this weekend, next weekend. And uh, it's perhaps in the case of your daughter. She even forgot the right sign for, hey, Dad, I'm out of air. Yeah, she did. And though. so you could stroll over to her thinking, well, she's low in air. And uh, so it is important to keep reviewing these things. Yes, it is. It's very important because uh, it, it just that uh, you may dive in the one season and be off for a while, and you need to hone those skills again. And and also to go through the signs that one needs to make down there to, to, to know what's happening. Always keep uh, your buddy in sight because you can get engrossed in things that you're doing either after game or just uh, seeing the sights that uh, are down there. So it's not just merely check your equipment, make sure everything's operational, but go over the signs and, and rehearse what you'll do if this comes up or if that comes up. And you know, as it applies to boating, um, I believe the same could be said about a lot of boaters. They go out weekend after weekend, have an enjoyable time, nothing, no bad weather, no engine problems for two or three months or however long. And then all of a sudden when something hits, they go, now, what was that? You know, because they hadn't reviewed it. So uh, I believe that's very important. Uh, do you have any finishing statements? We have about one minute left. Okay, well, uh, for, for the diving, uh, this is a... a uh sport that's new to me. I think for people who are, are thinking about boating, it's just one more aspect of, of uh, life uh, on the ocean. There's a lot to do, but while it, uh, some people tend to think it's a dangerous sport, I think it's no more dangerous than anything else. Uh, some of the sea life you see, uh, you hear a lot of uh, talk about sharks and shark attacks for divers and that. Uh, we've always had one rule of thumb that I would pass on everyone else that if you are diving and you're diving anywhere there where there's a lot of seals around, you got to stop and think you're diving in that shark's kitchen. Mm -hmm. And that is one place you don't want to go. Stay away from the that, seals. There's a good safety tip. And on that note, I'm going to thank you. And we'll be back with another sea tale right after this. Mm -hmm.